Hello, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Well, yesterday I shared a part one of vortex flow and stability in exotic vacuum objects. And uh, I didn't have time to get out all the things in that presentation, but uh, I'm going to fire you with some other key points uh, here. And I, I think essentially the point that I want to start back on um, is the uh, symmetry breaking. And uh, what I'm talking about is uh, here we have a, a big exotic vacuum object analog. This is in Suhas Ralkar's lab, and it's a hydrodynamic analog effectively. Uh, if we go back, what's happened here is uh, a kind of exotic vacuum object has come here, let's call it, and it hits the large toroid, and it does some symmetry breaking here, and this causes it to disintegrate. Uh, actually, during that disintegration, there's a couple of survivors that can go on and fight another day. Uh, and this is something that we see um, in uh, uh, Lena tracks. So anyway, what am I talking about? If I go here, this is the uh, model of the exotic vacuum object. And I've, I've done three levels. Um, and there's one thing I just want to clarify uh, for anyone that's not really got it. Um, the only thing that moves is the smallest level. And it moves, for instance, if, if we're tractoring around this way, the small toroid uh, itself rotates within itself. So it's like going like that. It's going like that the small torrid, and it's also rotating around like that. That's it. Now, the collective action of them all doing that makes this one appear like it's doing it. And the collective action of all of those doing that makes this one appear like it's doing it. But this itself, this is actually not rotating itself. These are fixed into position. So these effectively end up being ridges all the way around, and these end up being ridges all the way around. And this explains what you see in that large uh, Evo strike on the Hutchison sample. So that I just wanted to say is, is to clarify that. I've, I've been trying to do an animation to animate these, and so I can, and I will do that uh, so that it's very clear. And essentially what I'm saying, when the symmetry breaking occurs, you, you put these out of balance and they basically disconnect disconnect. I will explain how these are connected together at another time, uh, but for now uh, these effectively disconnect and you end up um, with something that is um, uh, in, in a bad way. But before I get on to that, I want to talk about um, uh, the two uh, together like this. So I've got two magnets here and you can see the the, the, they get, what I'm actually saying is they're rotating in the, the same orientation, okay, or the same direction here. And that's kind of like what's happening uh, here. They're, they're rotating in the same direction here, and they're rotating in the same direction here. Now, this could be considered the model for the small one. And this could be considered a small one in a much bigger one with three other layers, ad infinitum so below, as above, so below. So um, that's, that's essentially what I'm saying there. So, um, oh, ow, be careful with these things. <laughs> okay, so when two of them come together, um, uh, I did this video here, and essentially you've got a North Pole here and a South Pole here, uh, and uh, this effectively is, your smallest uh, uh, exotic vacuum object cluster. Uh, and uh, you've got this magnetic field line going around here. And um, Shoulders saw these. I'm gonna show you uh, what, how this, this is a slide from the Kickstarter for um, uh, Space Earth Human, Alexander Parkamov's book. And this is Ken Shoulders. Uh, this is the guy who basically invented the screening technology for microelectronics. So the fact that we have computers and smartphones, we have this guy to thank. Uh, he was brought in to look at the findings of John Hutchison, and uh, that led him on a 33, but basically saw out the rest of his life uh, uh, investigating these things. And he's the guy that gave the name Electron Validium, EV, I think it's Electron Validium, it's like Latin for strong electron. Um, and uh, he then changed it to charge clusters because he realized it wasn't always just electrons. And then he changed it to exotic vacuum objects because he realized 
they weren't just normal uh, uh, clusters of normal charged particles. Um, anyway, so uh, he's got here a, 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 an individual strike here. So now my magnets are all in a block. I'm gonna gonna have to show you this. So basically, the Evo has come in, and just like it did in the Hutchison sample, um, it's it's touched the surface, and it's it's basically turn this you can see the crystal grains on this lead glass well it's made a com completely amorphous blob this is what you see with um evo strikes it, it converts something that's crystalline into completely amorphous and it does it without even uh, melting it in the traditional sense what you've got here is you've got two uh, tori and they're arranged like this and I'm going to be able to show you many, many, many examples on all kinds of linear experiments uh, where you see these structures. But essentially, this is that way around, and this one's the other way around. I should have coloured it. Uh, and, and effectively, you get to see these outies and innies, outies and innies. And this is showing the magnetic flux line. Now, th this isn't uh, two EVs that are bored through the surface. Uh, this is one that's one that's come down like this. This one that's joined with it, and um, it has this uh, circular movement. Now, um, what he's showing here is effectively the same thing. This is two EVs uh, tied together and it's, it's breaking up. So uh, the constituents of it are, are falling apart. Uh, but you can see how it's spiraling around uh, itself um, uh, doing this thing. And, and this will give you some idea of how certain tracks are formed in strange radiation. So if you can imagine, uh, you've got an EV and it hits on the surface, you get a round track. If it goes through the surface, uh, as I said, you end up with a dual track. Uh, if you have two of these and they go along, you get multiple tracks. Uh, and if you've got two of them and they're spinning around, you can end up with these uh, twisted tracks. Uh, and so uh, we will. Uh, I've, I've actually shown a lot of these. In fact, almost all type of tracks uh, you can see on the uh, Amasa uh, vibrator plate. So if you go and look at um, strange radiation uh, uh, videos on our YouTube channel for the Amasa uh, uh, um, vibrator or Amar Pro Project Omar, um, that's what you need to type in, just Omar on our, our, our channel. And you will see it pretty much every uh, kind of strange radiation track. So anyway, so uh, this is our uh, Tory dimer. Uh, and uh, uh, make your head spin goes like a bit like that and you can see this oh dear <laughs> that's uh, messed that up anyway so there's there's our Tory dime I'm gonna get rid of that now and so I want to come back to here and I want to talk about what I've just shown you with uh, um, uh, Ken shoulders there and the um, uh, plastic that was surrounding um, uh, a sample of echo fuel uh, and before I go there I, I've got this and this actually is uh, in the case of uh, Ken shoulders uh, here's you can see 10 micrometers down here um, uh, so this is not very big and so you get the sloshing very close to the center in the case of this which is on the outside of the lion reactor go and look at lion look for lion on our YouTube channel you'll see uh, many many um, uh, videos relating to lion but essentially in the case of this, if I can actually get these neodymium magnets apart and put them together, um, what, what, what? Oh dear. <laughs> actually, this is perfect. I've got two that are going around. So you, we, we've got this magnetic flux line. If I, if I show you that way, they're, they're actually the, the right type to, to do it, be able to demonstrate this. So basically, two EVs came out in dark mode from the core of the reactor. And what happened is they were fed electrons off this kink in the heater wire, maybe from thermionic emission. And they just sat there and they sat there. So they, they were caught in the magnetic field line, but they were also uh, uh, um, feeding off it. And they grew to this gargantuan size. This is an exotic vacuum object that is, well, there's two of them uh, and they're paired, but th they are, I think it's 12 millimeters across, 12 millimeters. Now, you saw the one on the Hutchison sample, that was 1.6 millimeters. This is 12. <laughs> so these are six millimeters each. Anyway, there's lots of videos you can see on that on the YouTube channel. This is a smaller one. And in fact, both, in both cases, you can see this is bigger and this is smaller. So the implication is, is this is the outy and this is the inny. This is the outy and the inny. That's the implication. And that would make sense that it goes out and it hits this on the top. 
Okay, now when I, I've shared some, uh, I've got some more detail to share about this, but I've shared some incredible images of the top of this. And the interesting thing is on the underside, there's no damage at all. So it's literally, the stuff came through and it impacted on the top of this. And uh, you can see this, the kind of spiraling and concentric uh, uh, different elements of that in the focal point. So essentially, you can see on the outy, this is smaller. On the inny, it's bigger. On the uh, outy, it's smaller. And on the inny, it's bigger. And you know that's going in because it did that on the top of the wire. Um, in the case of this one, which is also on one of the Lion reactors, uh, you can imagine that th this is smaller. So this is the outy and this is the inny. And you can actually see the fractal uh, uh, shapes here. And this is uh, probably due to uh, dichotron instabilities. And you'll see these on the top of planets and, and so forth. Uh, so you've got the vortices in there, all the twist function in, in the core. And then you've got quip twit a number of uh, twists on the outside of this core and material is being pulled out here and going in here. So this is absolutely beautiful. What this shows uh, is so many things, but essentially what it is doing, it's just demonstrating this. So if we called it this one, the, the North Pole, uh, uh, this is slightly smaller. Uh, material is coming out. You can see it's coming out. It's actually raised it up inside the glass. I mean, this is perfectly smooth on the outside of the glass. So it's actually eating its way into the glass. It never made it through. And on the inside, it's kind of like dumping it when it gets to the exotic vacuum object that's also trapped on the inside of that dielectric. So uh, absolutely blinding. And, and this is, again, absolutely. You can, you can see both of these things, even if you're really not got very good eyesight <laughs> and they are very very obvious indeed uh, okay so what else did I want to show you in the course of this video okay so um, that's Alties and Innies on the line reactor and uh, Ken Shoulders work this uh, is in the uh, polymer that was exposed to uh, uh, radiation coming from uh, ultrasonically processed fuel for the ECHO reactor in India by Suhas Ralkar. And I actually have, I think, the image of how this is. So this is the fuel processor. So it's 1.5, 1.5, 1.5 kilowatts of cross-axis sound at 19.46 kilohertz. And this is the vessel into which the, um, I think it's titanium, uh, tungsten, uh, 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 potassium carbonate, light water, and uh, nickel uh, uh, powders were placed. And after 160 hours of processing, uh, I got a sample, I took it back to uh, uh, my home. Oh, there's the magnets again. Um, and I put it on an X-ray plate and we saw strange radiation on the X-ray plate. And uh, it kind of destroyed my bubble detector, which was interesting, uh, the plastic glue or whatever. But anyway, the, the, the point is, is that other, other than the container absolutely completely caked in strange radiation tracks, I, I decided this is plastic, this paper, and I actually put a neodymium magnet out here to affect uh, the movement of these things and draw it in a direction. So there's a neodymium magnet somewhere over here to kind of focus the, the strange radiation. And um, in this polymer, there is marks, uh, which I looked at under a laser microscope. So have I, got the, I haven't got the picture of the laser microscope, but anyway, um, I've shared a whole blog on this and you can download these images, but I wanted to draw your attention to several things in these images uh, and it's in the structures and I'll go back to here because I've actually marked up a few. Uh, drag that down there. Okay, so uh, what you're looking at here is a scale of, uh, I think it is uh, 1500 microns. Uh, it's actually on the image, yeah. So... Uh, it's 1,280 by 1,280 microns, so the 640, I think, on each one. What I've done is put, I put some rings on here, and each of these rings are 100 microns. So um, it, it, in between uh, uh, these two spots, uh, which is uh, one tori ring, but it's it's a... Uh, it's, it's got some clustering going on. You can see an outy and an inny. An outy, it's, it's smaller and it's got a central white spot. It, it, this is slightly larger and it's got a black spot in the middle. Uh, here's a here's a outy and an inny. Uh, so you've got the black around there and the white spot in the middle and here's the white spot. So these, these are different quanta of the thing. 
This is actually just a straight uh, Evo and it's, it's through the plane uh, and, and you can actually see the field affecting the polymer uh, uh, both in this sort of dog bone shape here uh, but also you can see it's like a half toro. So essentially the, uh, uh, the Evo has come into the surface like this and gone boom here. Um, so uh, you know it's, it's just a, a straight uh, one uh, of those. Now I think uh, there's there's a there's a, a series of them here, uh, and they're feeding the material around each other. Uh, what else can we look at here? So there's a lot to see on this one. Um, anyway, well, I will of course always share these images. These, actually, these were all shared a long time ago. It's funny actually because um, when I was giving the presentation in Sochi uh, of this. Um, uh, I think it was Baranov. He said, "What's going on here?" And I said, "Oh, that's probably just damage on the on the polymer." Uh, but the hilarious thing is, I now know why because I'm going to show you a paper in a, in a few minutes uh, uh, from Rodinov and, and uh, Savatimova, and they have exactly the same kind of strange radiation track. So obviously, uh, Baranov immediately recognised that. But what I want to show you here uh, is these uh, two spots with a ring around it. So effectively, uh, this is either a very small Evo or it, it's, a, it's a dual Evo, very tightly packed uh, and so forth. And there's, there's quite a few on, on this particular area of the sample. Um, anyway, so you'll be able to see these uh, in your own time. Now, this is where it gets really, really, really interesting. So what I was saying um, when we go back to here, is uh, if we have the symmetry breaking here and our, our thing splits, we have a torus that's split, okay? And um, what does that look like? So I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of, no, I'm gonna leave those up there for the minute. Uh, let's have a look, is it this one? Ah, yes, so here is our torus split. Um, so essentially, taken our uh, exotic vacuum object I've uh, broken its symmetry and it's come out and it's a bit like a, a split, split washer like this and you can see it obviously much bigger there um, so uh, I've just done a, a little bit of a rotation here just a few frames so you can see interestingly this looks a bit like a zigzag doesn't it hmm yeah Hmm. Well, Rodinov and Savatomova, uh, they did uh, some uh, study, uh, and I will find it. So th this is the paper. Obviously, I will share the paper. Um, okay, so here's a selection of strange radiation tracks. Uh, if I go into that... Um, Maybe you can see. So here's kind of like a, the zigzaggy tracks. Um, these aren't so clear. Uh, we've shared some incredibly clear images. Um, actually, this one, I, I can tell you right now that this is an Evo that's collided with surface. And if you looked at the uh, uh, vortex yesterday from uh, uh, Alien Scientist and, and uh, Physics Girl, or I think it's something like that, um, uh, essentially you've got the vortex and it sucks things in from the back and it, it, it there's a little dome on the top so this is an Evo that's hit the surface and the scoop out there is the dome so actually the, the vortice was in here it scraped stuff around the outside um, but you don't get the center spot so this isn't one that's burrowing the surface it's just collided with the surface um, this is probably a couple of uh, uh, Evos, a dual Evo, and, and they're twisting around each other, so you get this braided fashion. Uh, this actually, <laughs> this is a completely, uh, this is a long uh, exotic vacuum object chain that's kind of like wiggled around and it's just hit the surface. So it's like a piece of string that's gone. <laughs> um, these are extremely easy to explain when you know what you're looking at. Now here, this is a kind of like zigzag track uh, and what these are is, uh, uh, as, as the split uh, symmetry broken Evo travels down the, uh, uh, the uh, material, uh, again, still stuck at halfway, um, it, it creates this uh, type of track. Uh, this one is the same kind of track as um, you've got on 
uh, the um, the slide from Suhas Ralkar, and and maybe you could guess that th th this is the Evo, and it's just spinning this way. So it kind of misses a bit, and then it, or it's spinning this way on itself, and it scrapes a bit more, and then it misses a bit, and it scrapes a bit more. So you get this kind of uh, like teardrop or periodic uh, structure like that. Uh, what else have we got? This is this is an M and M track, so it's it's probably a variation of this turning around. Um, and so on. So uh, that is those. And uh, th these ones are interesting. Again, uh, I, uh, on the indium that we exposed to the vibrator plates uh, in uh, Project Omar, um, I, I will share these, but it's indium. So it's like one of the softest metals that, in fact, it's, I think it's the softest metal, uh, lowest ductile strength of anything that doesn't like immediately react with water. That's one of the reasons I chose it. But it, we've got these tracks, it, it almost exactly the same as this beautiful ones to share. Um, so I'll, I'll get those out to you as soon as I can. Um, uh, but yeah, this is in uh, steel or something, I don't know. And, and, and they've observed transmutations in, in the track. So yeah. Um, Excellent work by Rodinov and Savatamova. Now, the interesting thing is they do some calculations and blah, 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 and there's some speculations. And here we go. They're actually saying that there are these some type of flux rings that are able to form these various structures. And when they go through the material, they create a range of tracks. There we go. <laughs> um, now, the really interesting thing here, uh, which uh, I think is going to be a moment where you go, oh, my God. There's this, right? What are we looking at here? Well, this, it looks like our split ring here, doesn't it? Our split Evo. Oh my God. In fact, I've cleaned it up and we've got it here. So what um, are, are we actually looking at here? This looks like what came out of an Evo. Now, look at our, uh, uh, where is our EV, Evo? Uh, so here's our uh, Evo structure. Look, we've got ridges going around and we've got ridges going around, okay? What do we have on this image? We have ridges going around, ridges going around in lines. And if you look at it, there's a slight bit of undulation as it goes round. Um, uh, you can even see it on the edge there. So it's kind of sticking out. And the other thing that's really striking is on the inside curvature, there's these kind of much more pronounced ridges. And if we go back to our uh, structure, our Evo, where you get pinched, uh, the field lines get pinched uh, of the substructures you get a sharper uh, uh, curvature on the inside of the exotic vacuum object. So maybe I can zoom in there and you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So on, on the outside, it's a smooth curve, right? More smooth. <laughs> and on the inside, it gets pinched. So it's, it's more exaggerated. So um, that is what you are seeing here. This is a close up of this over here. And so you can see that the the Evo itself, it does not rotate. You know, this whole ring is not rotating. It's not rotating th this way as a ring. It's only because the smallest component is, is uh, rotating. And it effectively makes the bigger ring act like it was the smaller ring. And the very much bigger ring act like it was small, uh, like a much bigger ring. In fact, it makes the whole thing act as if it's the small thing. It's just like it's a condensate where the whole thing acts as one thing like the small thing. Oh my God. Are we actually physically visualizing a condensate where they act as one thing in exactly the same way as the sub-things would act. It's a thing of beauty, a real thing of beauty. Okay, oh my God, I've got lots to do and I have to break off. 
So, um, uh, where did I want to go with this? So, uh, on the Amaza vibrator plate, you know, this is um, the work of, of uh, 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 Rodinov and Sadatomova. On the Amaza vibrator plate, one of those I, I was looking at in Magic Sound Lab in California. Uh, with the courtesy of Alan Goldwater and uh, some donors that enabled me to go over there and look at some of the materials that I've had over the last couple of years. And I was looking at one of the plates and it's actually breathtaking what you see on this plate. And I'll, I'll, I'll go to the, I think I've got the PDF here somewhere. Oh, by the way, uh, this is, if you go to our Steam It blog, uh, you can see this, I posted it uh, two and a half years ago. Um, this is the laser microscope. These are some scans. You can download all the images. These are the strange radiation tracks on the inside of the material. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's that. Um, okay, so this is the strike mark. You can actually visibly see these with your eyes. And what it would appear to be is that a rather large exotic vacuum object came in and collided here, or it was a twofer, one here and one here. It might be either, um, without looking at it completely. But it looks like it's a large object here. And uh, it kind of came in at an angle. This is why this is an ellipsoid. And as it hit here, it broke up and, and you've got the debris field and you've got the shock wave uh, from this thing exploding. Um, and if we go into, where have we got it here? We go into the center here, uh, right in the center, uh, we've got some diamond, and um, we've seen this, and I talked about this on on, on other videos. Um, you you can you can actually look through the X-ray beam, can look through and see some of the material underneath, which is unfortunate. But you know, it's the same as Leclerc saw in cavitation, um, uh, the production of diamond. Why diamond? Think about it. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, this is one of them. I, I will I will share these images. Uh, but let's go into this thing it, itself really closely. So um, what I've got is this structure. And as I said, it's it's kind of like this is the diamond you just saw. And it's this the, this is one of the flux loops. And over here you have uh, this structure. And I go back here. Okay. So again, when you look at this one that you see here, I mean, first off, I just want to share this with you. Uh, we have our scale down here, which is 30 microns. Each of these segments are three microns. And if I put uh, this on, so let's let's look across this boundary here. So if you look across that boundary, you've got uh, six, seven, something like that. And if you look across this, you, this is 30. So we take six off. We've got uh 24 so it kind of it kind of is the 4 uh, D uh, sort of the diameter of the the the, the, the filament uh, is 1 and it's 4 times 1 let's say 4, 4 D for the overall thing there but anyway you, you can look at this in your own time um, uh, there's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to in in this one uh, we have this kind of little ridge around the inside here, which kind of goes a bit wonky over here. And there's a, almost like a spiral form on the inside of this. But also we have ridges around here, just like we had on the uh, uh, the Rodinov and Savatomova one. But there's not there's a lot of ridges here, and uh, um, uh, there's only a few here. Now, look at the end here. We have a pentagon. Now. The ridges, the sub ridges, and everything. It's going to be a presentation after the week weekend. Um, uh, I want to talk about quantization in exotic vacuum objects for the basic building blocks. This is unimaginably amazing. It's unimaginably amazing, but basically, I told you. <laughs> I think you can guess. <laughs> you should be able to guess. Anyway, th there's quantization that goes on, and uh, up to a certain point, uh, you, you know, effectively, uh, the, the nub of it is there's lots here, so you get basically get a very round looking uh, 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 exotic vacuum object here, uh, and uh, so there's many. But if you only had like say one, two, three, four, five around this loop, but you still have many around here, you end up with um, something that gives you uh, a um, uh, what do you call it? A um, a pentagon at the end. 
And the interesting thing is if we uh, look at the, uh, I, I've actually done this in, a, in another video. Um, th this was high bit depth. And if you change with the contrast, you can actually see a pentagon on here. So th this Evo was effectively a very similar one to the one that, that did uh, uh, the, the production of this uh, particular structure. Now, you can look at the uh, elements in this. Uh, and essentially the interesting thing is that uh, if we look at them and it is uh, 980 and 981 if we go to 980 and 981 uh, it, it, both of them have very high iron content now uh, we already showed that the when you're using this was with magnesium chloride uh, with deuterium and so on and we showed that the production of, of iron uh, is highly favorable from the uh, Parkamov reaction tables um, so uh, that's iron, um, and uh, we've got some area samples here. This is 991, this is 990, and I'll go down to uh, 990 um, is, uh, what's the, on the iron? So yeah, so 9990 here uh, has the highest, uh, and it actually has high nickel as well. And so if, if I go to the directory on that, so uh, this, this is a spot viewed on, on, under the optical microscope, the two diamond bits here. This is our either two Evos or, or a loop. I think it's, it's two, it's a pair of uh, together. And you can see it's kind of sweeping the material around it. And you, en you end up with this kind of, I call them bagels. Sorry, I don't call them bagels, I call them pretzels. Uh, there was one very clearly in the 225 day reactor from uh, Alexander Parkamov. And there's one on the outside of the tungsten that we exposed to a Mars gas. So these things, you, you, the Evos are just everywhere. It's just, it's tedious. They're just everywhere. Um, but uh, anyway, you can see the very different materials uh, around it. But anyway, uh, what I, what I showed on uh, another video is that if you have magnesium and chlorine, it can produce iron and magnesium and chlorine, it can produce nickel. So it tends to produce iron and nickel. Those are the most favorable outcomes, plenty of energy yielded. Uh, magnesium and chlorine uh, can go to nickel as well. Uh, and uh, we've got magnesium and magnesium going to chrome. So the, the observed uh, elements here, chrome, iron and nickel, are all coming from the fact that you've got magnesium and chlorine in there. So it's producing fusion. Now, why is it interesting that the majority of the atoms are iron and nickel in this case? And the reason that iron and nickel are in there is because, uh, is why? Because they're magnetic. <laughs> so if you have something like this, right? which is highly magnetic in a flux loop and in the center, what would tend to be in there? What would tend to form in there? Or, or, or work well in there, it would be your core of your electromagnet. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Um, <laughs> right, that's not always the case though, because with an intense enough magnetic field, pretty much anything can become magnetic. Uh, so where were we? Let's go back to Photoshop. So um, what we're looking at is it's something that's quantized at five points around the outside. And that yields five points around the outside, and that yields iron and and, uh, and nickel magnetic elements. Uh, but in the case of Rodinov uh, here, uh, this is actually uh, very very interesting uh, for two reasons. The first reason is this is uh, tungsten. It's tungsten. It's pure tungsten. Wow. So, you know, maybe the quantization here, maybe the quantization here defines the type of atom that gets produced inside. Let me say that again. Maybe the radial quantization of the exotic vacuum, vacuum object substructures define the atoms that get produced inside when the exotic vacuum object falls apart. Now, here is the absolute killer. What am I talking about? This structure was found in 200,000 year old rock by a geologist. You do not get tungsten, free tungsten in nature. And there was no one around to make it. 
Thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.